Zion, see your Savior come. Now of old and new the song, not as monarch grand and brave, not with kingly pomp and state, but as child of poverty in his mother's arm is he law fulfilled his ransom paid now in simeon's arm is laid jesus like your praise we see israel's lord and gentiles king see the old man hear him cry now lord let your servant die your salvation you have shown light for every nation known hannah too takes up the song Praising God both loud and long, thanking God for faithful word, telling what they've seen and heard. Jesus, light your praise we sing, Israel's Lord and Gentile's King. Spirit, bless the source of grace. Bring us all to see your face. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high, for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy church, for all who enter it with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our holy father, Francis, Pope of Rome, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our most reverend, Metropolitan, William, for our God, living Bishop Kurt, for the venerable Presbyterate, the diaconate in Christ, all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, <laughs> have mercy. For our government, for all in the service of our country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city, community, for the faithful living in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by sea, air, and land, for the sick, the suffering, the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we be delivered from all affliction, wrath, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Protect us, save us, and mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves to one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. For to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is due all glory, honor, and worship, now and ever and forever. Amen. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. 
Sing praise to his name, give to him glorious praise. Through the prayers of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Through the prayers of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. Be gracious to us, O God, and bless us. Let your face shine upon us and have mercy on us. O Son of God, risen from the dead, save us who sing to you. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Holy begotten Son and Word of God, who to become incarnate of the holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and became man without change. <coughs> you were also crucified, O Christ our God, and by death have trampled death, being one of the Holy Trinity, glorified with the Father and the Holy Spirit, save us. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim God our Savior, O Son of God, risen from the dead, save us who sing to you, hallelujah. Wisdom the attentive, Come worshiped and bow before Christ. O Son of God, risen from the dead, save us who sing to you. Alleluia. The joyful message of the resurrection was heard by the woman disciple from the angel and being freed from the ancestral curse they boasted to the apostles death is despoiled Christ our God is risen, giving great mercy to the world. Rejoice, the Otokos, virgin full of grace, for from you has shone forth the Son of Justice, Christ our God, enlightening those who are in darkness. Rejoice also, you just elder. You received in your arms the liberator of our soul, who grants us resurrection. <coughs> Glory to the Father and to, to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Here, 
Let us offer the Lord's eyes like the publican. As sinners, let us fall before him, our master, for he wills the salvation of everyone. He grants forgiveness to all who repent. For while remaining God, co-eternal with the Father, He took flesh for our sake, now and ever and forever. Amen. Christ our God, through your birth you sanctified the virgin's womb and blessed the hands of Simeon as was proper. Now you have come and saved us. Give peace to the nations at war and strengthen our government. For you alone love us all. <laughs> For you are holy, our God. We give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Holy God. Holy be attentive, peace be to all, wisdom be attentive. How many are your works, O oh Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. In wisdom you have made them all. Bless the Lord my soul. Lord my God, how great you are. How many are your works, O oh Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. In wisdom you have made them all. Wisdom. A uh, second reading from the second epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to Timothy. Let us be attentive. Timothy, my son, you have followed closely my teaching and my conduct. You have observed my resolution, fidelity, patience, love, and endurance through persecutions and sufferings in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. 
You know that what persecutions I have had to bear, and you know how the Lord saved me from them all. <coughs> Anyone who wants to live a godly life in Jesus and in Christ Jesus can expect to be persecuted. But all the while evil men and Carlton's will go from bad to worse, deceiving others, themselves deceived. You, for the part, must remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know who your teachers were. Likewise, from your infancy, you have known the sacred scriptures, the source of the wisdom which through faith in Jesus Christ leads to salvation. Peace be to you, reader, wisdom be attentive. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Go forth, triumph, and reign for the sake of truth and meekness and justice. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You love justice and hate wickedness. Alleluia, Wisdom, let us stand and listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. And <clears throat> to your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory <clears throat> to you, O Lord. Glory. Let us be attentive. At one time, the Lord told his parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee, with head unbowed, prayed this way. I give you thanks, O God, that I am not like the rest of men who are grasping, crooked, adulterous, or even like this, like this publican here. Look, I fast twice a week. I pay tithes and all I possess. The other man, however, kept his distance, not even daring to raise his eyes to heaven. All he did was beat his breast and say, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Believe me, this man went home for the temple justified, but the other did not, because everyone who exalts himself shall someday be humble while he who humbles himself shall be exalted. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Today is the Sunday of the publican and the Pharisee. In the story, it seems that the Pharisee was only concerned with impressing God, reminding God how good I am, what I do, and I'm not like other people. That was his prayer to God. The publican's prayer was one of sincerity and sorrow for his sins. All he could think of saying to God is, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. 
<clears throat> How do we deal with our sense of guilt? How do we deal with our sense of sorrow? How do we deal with our sense of regret and shame? But yet, it's, it's possible for the human heart to become so hard that you no longer feel regret. You no longer feel sorry or shame for the sins you have committed. We often, for example, hear about the terrible crimes which are committed by people in the daily news. Horrific crimes, brutality, violence. And sometimes it seems the perpetrator is almost immune or numb to what he or she had done. Every one of us here this morning from time to time, I hope you feel sorrow and regret and shame and guilt about something. You and I should thank God for that. It means that your heart is not hardened against the will of God or the voice of God. You still have a conscience as your guide. Many people foolishly and happily and steadfastly kill their consciences. You can do it by your lifestyle. Just give it time. It could happen. It's a tragedy. It's a spiritual and emotional tragedy. And the story of the publican and the Pharisee shows how two men dealt with their personal lives. The publican knew he was lacking in so many ways. He didn't dare try to impress God. Probably he couldn't. He didn't have anything to show God as a trophy, as a prize, or a blue ribbon to say, well, look at me, too. I'm pretty good. He didn't do any of that. What bothered him was how he was lacking in the eyes of God. Some people can hide their sense of guilt or sorrow or shame. They can bury it so deeply that no eyes can see it, not even our own. But there's a better way. If you and I have a sense of sorrow and regret, and shame, the first thing we can do is be happy we have it. It's a sure sign that you are human. A writer once said that, I envy animals. He wrote these words, animals do not sweat or whine about their condition. Animals do not lay awake in the dark and weep for their sins. And he was right. Animals do not think or feel that way as human beings do. But you and I are human beings, and what we have is called a conscience. It speaks to us about what we say and what we do. And happily, it even blames us. Sometimes the conscience holds us up to things that we say and do. Yet, the conscience is by no means an infallible guide, but it is a priceless part of our human equipment. So your conscience and mine deserve a hearing. We would be wise not to stifle that voice on the inside. Keep it alive. Keep your conscience sensitive. Keep it focused on the important things in your lives the things that really matter. When your conscience comes to you and says, shame on you, it might be an opportunity to become a better person, justified in the eyes of God. The publican learned that, and he knew that in today's story. This sense of 
shame and sorrow and regret for what we have done can bring blessings and happiness in our lives. My dear people, this sense of sorrow and regret for our sins is not only a matter of religion or theology. It's a very real and human interaction. Did you ever meet a person who constantly lies to you? It's hard to get close to that person or trust him or her. Even if the lies are not out and out whoppers, but it is impossible to do that. It's also impossible for God as well. If you want to get close to God, you have to keep, take off your mask and be honest with him. The, public, the publican did that with himself. The Pharisee kept his mask of self-congratulation, and he left that temple not justified in the eyes of God. The quickest way to get to God is to, first of all, tell him how sorry you are for disappointing him, how sorry you are for ignoring him, how sorry you are for offending him, how sorry you are for thinking little of him, how sorry you are for not being grateful to him. And if you start there, you open his ears, his mind, and his heart to his love and his grace, and you will walk away justified in his eyes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us all say with our whole soul, with our whole mind, let us say, Mercy. Lord Almighty God of our fathers, we pray you hear and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray you hear and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our Holy Father Francis, Pope of Rome, for our most reverend Metropolitan William, for our God loving Bishop Kurt, for those who serve and have served in this holy church, for our spiritual fathers, and for all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Again, we pray for our government, for all in the service of our country. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the people here present who await your great and abundant mercy, for those who show us mercy. And for all Christians of the true faith, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. For you are merciful and loving God, we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Let us who
May the Lord God remember his kingdom, our Holy Father, Francis, Pope of Rome, our most reverend metropolitan, William, our God-living Bishop Kirk, the entire priestly, diaconal, and monastic order, our civil authorities, and all in the service of our country, and the ever-memorable founders and benefactors of this holy church. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom all you Christians of the true faith, always, now, and ever, and forever. Amen. <laughs> that we may receive, receive the King of all, invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. For the precious gives place before us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, <laughs> Grant this through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed together, with your all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. <laughs> Peace be to all. And to your spirit. Let us love one another that with one light we may profess. The Father <laughs> and the Son. And the Holy Spirit, <coughs> the Trinity, <coughs> one in essence and undivided. In wisdom, let us be attentive. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, the only begotten, born of the Father before all ages, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in essence with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried. He rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he is coming again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father. Together with the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He spoke through the prophets in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I profess one baptism for the remission of sin. I expect the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <laughs> let us stand here right, let us stand in all, let us be attentive to offer the holy anaphora in peace. Mercy, peace, a sacrifice of praise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and just. It is proper and just to sing to you, to bless you, to praise you, to thank you, to worship you in every place of your dominion. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands, even though there stand before you thousands of archangels, tens of thousands of angels, cherubim and seraphim, six sweet many-eyed, serving aloft in their wings, singing, shouting, crying aloud, and saying the triumphal hymn. Holy, holy. to cry out with these blessed powers, a loving and kind master, and say, Holy are you, and all holy you, and your only begotten Son, and your Holy Spirit. Holy are you, and all holy and magnificent is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. He came and fulfilled the whole divine plan in our behalf. On the night he was betrayed, or rather when he surrendered himself in the life of the world, he took bread into his holy, all pure and immaculate hands, gave thanks and blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sin. Amen. Likewise, he took the chalice after supper, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sin. Amen. Remembering therefore this saving command, all that has come to pass on our behalf, the cross, the tomb, resurrection on the third day, ascension into heaven, sitting at the right hand, second coming in glory, offering you your own, from your own, always and everywhere. We praise you, we bless. you to this spiritual and bloody sacrifice we implore pray and entreat you send down your holy spirit upon us and upon these gifts lying before us and make this bread the precious body of your christ that in this chalice the precious blood of your christ changing them by your holy spirit that for those who partake of them they may bring about a spirit of vigilance remission of sins communion of your holy spirit fullness of the heavenly kingdom confidence in you not judgment or condemnation Moreover, we offer you the spiritual sacrifice for those departed in faith. The forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, for every just spirit brought to perfection in faith. Especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary. It is truly proper to glorify you. O Theotokos, the ever-blessed, immaculate, and the mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare more glorious than the seraphim, who a virgin gave birth to God the Word. You truly, the Theotokos, we magnify. 
Among the first to Lord, remember our Holy Father, Francis, Pope of Rome, our most reverend Metropolitan, William, our God-loving Bishop Kerr. Preserve them for your holy churches in peace, safety, honor, and health for many years as they faithfully impart the word of your truth. And remember all your people. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise the most honored and magnificent day, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. May the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. Now that we have commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. With the precious gifts offering and consecrated that our God who loves us all may receive them on his holy, heavenly, mystical altar as an aroma of spiritual fragrance and sent down upon us to return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Asking for unity in the faith for communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves to one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you. And make us worthy, O Master, that we may with confidence and without condemnation dare call you Father, God of heaven, and say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. And to your spirit. Bow your heads to the Lord. To you, O Lord. Through the grace, the mercies, and the loving kindness of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed together with your all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Let us be attentive. Holy gifts to holy people. One is holy, one is Lord, Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. I believe and profess that you are truly Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. Accept me today as a partaker of your mystical supper, O Son of God, for I will not reveal your mystery to your enemies, nor will I give you a kiss as to Judas, for like the thief I profess you. Remember me, O Lord, when you come in your kingdom. Remember me, O Master, when you come in your kingdom. Remember me, O Holy One, when you come in your kingdom. May the partaking of your holy mysteries, O Lord, be not for my judgment or condemnation, but for the healing of soul and body. O Lord, I also believe and profess that this which I'm about to receive is truly your most precious body and your life-giving blood, which I pray make me worthy to receive for the remission of all my sins 
and for life everlasting. Amen. O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. O God, cleanse me of my sins and have mercy on me. O Lord, forgive me, for I have sinned without number. Approach with fear of God and with faith. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God and has revealed himself to us. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the highest. Praise him in the highest. Praise him in the highest. The, highest. the Lord from the Right. 
seek most precious treasure. people, O God, and bless your inheritance. We have seen the true light. We have received the heavenly spirit. We have found the true faith, and we worship the undivided Trinity. For the Trinity has saved us. Blessed is our God always, now and ever and forever. Amen. May our mouth be filled with your praise, O Lord, so that we may sing of your glory, sing of your glory. For you have deemed us worthy to partake of your holy, divine, immortal, your and life creating mysteries. Keep us in your holiness so that all the day long we may live according to your truth. Alleluia, alleluia, 
that we ever receive the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly, life-creating and awesome mysteries of Christ, let us worthily thank the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For you, our sanctification, we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, blessing those who bless you and sanctifying those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Preserve the fullness of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power. Do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the priests, to our government, and to all your people. For all generous giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from you, the Father of lights. We give glory, thanksgiving, and worship to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Blessed be the name of the now and forever, now and forever, now and forever. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and loving kindness, always now and ever and forever. My dear people, if anyone would like to obtain blessed candles uh, after the liturgy, you're welcome to come forward at the front and uh, take the candles uh, which you might want. Also, too, our Parahi workers are going to start their project again. It's going to be uh, during the week of February 22nd, on Tuesday and Wednesday of that week. And we're always happy to have new helpers. We're happy for another reason. We have a new dough machine, and now they're raring to go. With a new dough machine, uh, the workers are very encouraged, and we welcome anybody. You don't have to be a parishioner to be a Padohi worker. We welcome volunteers from St. John's as well to join our Padohi group, and we want to keep it going, and we look, uh, are looking forward to the project. So come and uh, volunteer, especially if you're retired. If you have extra time on your hands, why not do this as a, a valuable and important church project? We will offer you on-the-job training. You don't have to be skilled. We will skill you. We will give you all the talent and all the knowledge you need. Just come, bring yourself, and you will become a professional parohi worker. So we welcome you in that regard. My dear friends, Bishop Kurt has granted me permission to retire uh, as of February 7th, which I believe is tomorrow. St. Mary's will become a mission parish to St. John's. The liturgy schedule for both parishes is as follows. On Saturday at 5 o'clock, the liturgy will be at St. John's. On Sunday at 9 o'clock, as always, it will be at St. Mary. So our two parish will share these two liturgies. For those who would like to go uh, to St. Uh, John's for five o'clock on Saturday, you're welcome to go. Take your St. Mary's envelope with you and it'll find its way back here. So you're welcome to go there for the five o'clock liturgy uh, on Saturday at St. John's. And as usual, the liturgy will be here uh, at St. Mary's. Daily liturgies will now continue as usual here at St. Mary's. Uh, and of course, we have a new priest coming, Father Eugene Radil. He is a married priest with three children from Ukraine. 
and he will reside at St. John's Rectory at this time. Father Hradil is coming tonight around 11 o'clock on the plane to JFK Airport with his wife and children. He's most anxious and happy to come to our churches to, say, to help us with that. For two months or so before this, my announcement to you this morning, we didn't know if he was, if he was ever going to come at all. Look at the Ukraine, what's going on there. That family was lucky to get out of there. We weren't even sure if he was coming. And we weren't even sure what, what date he might come. All of a sudden it happened. And we're grateful to God uh, for that. And we're grateful for the bishop for provi providing a priest for our two churches. Rick Hoppe was appointed lay administrator of our parish. Father Gregory Noga was appointed administrator of St. John's. Now please keep in mind that Father Eugene is coming here as somebody from another country. Out of Christian charity and love and gratitude, he deserves your patience. He deserves your kindness as he and his family try to adapt in new ways. It's going to be a tremendous challenge to this man. Put yourself in his shoes. Take on an adventure and challenge like that. Many would not even try it. But Father Eugene is coming with love and dedication in his, in his heart and soul. So the challenge is up to you to try to welcome him with your open minds, your open hearts, your open hands. We are all one body in Christ Jesus. You know, I have been here at St. Mary's almost 20 years. And in those 20 years, it was a joy to be your priest. I'm 52 years a priest now, but now in my life, I am looking forward to a new adventure, a new change. I am looking forward to retirement at this point in my life. And I ask you to welcome Father Eugene as you welcomed me for 20 years. Give him your love, give him your support, give him your trust, and you will be blessed in so many ways, I am sure, by God. May God grant Father Eugene and his family, his wife and three children, success and happiness in their new land, their new future, and their new life. St. Mary's and St. John's are now his parishes. God grant you many years. God grant you many years. God grant you many blessed years in health and happiness. In health and happiness. God grant you many blessed years. Grant, O Lord, to your servant, the priest Eugene, his wife and children, and the parishioners of St. John's and St. Mary's Parish, peace, health, and a long life for many blessed and happy years. God grant them many years. God grant them many years. God grant them many blessed years. In health and happiness, in health and happiness, God grant them many blessed years. Glory to you, O Christ, God our hope, glory to you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever, amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Give the blessing. May Christ, our true God, risen from the dead, have mercy on us and save us through the prayers of his most pure mother and of the holy, glorious, and illustrious apostles, 
of our Holy Father, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, of the Holy Mother of God Mary, the patroness of this church, and through the prayers of all your saints, for Christ is good and loves us all. Yeah. 